Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're here to uh, cut through the noise and get you the insights that matter. Today, we're tackling a subject that, well, it feels pretty familiar in this world of digital assets, doesn't it? You know, online investments, big promises. You see the glossy sites, you hear the claims, and you're left wondering, is this actually real? So our focus for this Deep Dive is a platform called HelloBit. Now, on the surface, it looks uh, pretty polished, claims to be a global digital asset trading platform for professional traders, mm. offers what, over 40 cryptocurrency products and investment services, mm. positions itself as a leading blockchain financial service provider. Sounds impressive, right? Like for serious players. It certainly sounds the part. So yeah, our mission today is to peel back those layers. Is HelloBit legit? Or is something else going on under the surface? We've gone through our source material, a uh, pretty detailed YouTube review to pull out the key info, help you stay informed, and maybe avoid some, well, some serious pitfalls. It's a really relevant topic. We see these platforms popped up all the time, making huge claims. So yeah, it's absolutely vital to look past the marketing, you know, understand what's actually going on, or maybe what isn't going on, before you'd even think about putting money in. Right. That's the clarity we want to bring for you today. Okay, let's unpack this then. HelloBit definitely gives off this vibe of uh, confidence, tech savvy. They present as this really sophisticated platform, you know, for the pros, lots of products, advanced tech, big international presence. Yeah. It's easy to see how someone looking into it might think, wow, this looks like the real deal. Ticks all the boxes you'd sort of expect. Initially, yes. Yeah. The surface impression is key for them. But, uh-oh, the moment you start digging, According to our source, the first massive red flag just jumps out. They provide absolutely zero information on ownership, no executives listed anywhere on their site. For a financial platform, handling money, I mean, what does that kind of secrecy immediately tell you? Well, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because transparency is just fundamental for trust in finance, completely fundamental. When you invest, you you expect to know who's running the show, right? Okay. Who owns it? Who's accountable? Of course. So. A complete vacuum like this, especially around who's in charge, that's a textbook for an operation trying to hide something, trying to avoid scrutiny. Legitimate businesses, they want you to know who they are. They build trust. These guys, they seem to want to be ghosts. Ghosts. Okay, so we've got anonymity, but it gets worse, right? right. Our source found it wasn't just one website. HelloBit seems to be running across multiple domains. What did the source say about those domains and where they're hosted? Ah, yeah, this is where it gets, uh, let's say, significantly murkier. Our source shows Hellabit isn't just one site. It's got multiple domains. And crucially, many of them already flagged. Flagged. Flagged for fraud by Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Okay, that's not trivial. They're huge in web security. Exactly. They handle infrastructure and security for millions of sites. So when they flag multiple domains linked to one operation for fraud, well, that's a serious indictment. It suggests active malicious behavior right it's not just a glitch not at all and then there's the hosting all these flag sites hosted on alibaba cloud mm. china-based hosting what's the significance there well our source suggests potential ties but more broadly using hosting like alibaba cloud can sometimes be a strategic choice for these types of operations it might be about operating in jurisdictions with let's say different oversight levels or making it easier to manage disposable infrastructure it helps them evade detection, makes shutting them down harder for international bodies. It's calculated. Calculated evasion. Okay. That leads us to, well, a really critical point in this deep dive, the kind of official confirmation that really shifts things. We're moving beyond just suspicious now, aren't we? What did our source find about regulators getting involved? Yeah, this is probably the, uh, the most damning evidence you could find. You have bodies like Spain's CNMV, that's their big securities commission. They don't just issue warnings randomly. They investigate thoroughly. Right. There's a process. A serious process. So when the CNMV issues a securities fraud warning against HelloGet, which they did back in March 2025, yeah. that carries enormous weight. Okay. Yeah. Spain? Anyone else? Yes. Just a month later, April 2025, New Zealand's FMA, their financial markets authority, they did the same thing. Explicitly listed HelloBit as a fraudulent investment scheme. Wow. Okay. So two different countries, two official financial watchdogs. Exactly. These aren't just opinions. They're conclusions from reputable bodies whose job is protecting investors. Bright red flashing lights saying, stay away. Unequivocal warnings. Okay. But beyond the regulators, our source found something else pretty staggering. HelloBit, despite claiming all this sophisticated trading, 
It seems like there are no actual products or services. Is that right? That's what the analysis points to. And it's uh, another classic sign, a hallmark of a Ponzi scheme. So if there's no real product, no actual trading generating profits, how does the money supposedly get made? It doesn't, not legitimately. Yeah. The whole model relies purely on bringing in new money from new investors. The promoters, they're not selling a service, they're selling the membership itself. Ah, oh, okay. People are convinced to deposit crypto, specifically Tether, USDT, that stablecoin pegged to the dollar. And they're promised these easy, passive returns. How do they get people in? Referral commissions, often multi-level. Hellabit apparently uses three levels. Recruit more people, get a cut. But the details are hidden. Precisely. The specifics of how those fissions work, how much you get paid, it's all kept hidden from the public. Total lack of transparency there. And why hide that? Well, if a business is legitimate, they're usually open about compensation. Hiding it suggests the model isn't sustainable, that it relies entirely on that constant inflow of new cash. Or maybe the payouts just don't add up under scrutiny. It's like that magic beanstalk analogy you mentioned. Keep planting beans, promise a harvest, but never show the actual plant. Exactly. Yeah. Just keep asking for more beans from new recruits to pay the old ones. Okay, so let's get into the nuts and bolts then. How does this hello bit thing actually work day to day for an investor? Because the source describes something called a click a button act scheme. And apparently it involves a specific telegram channel, TSQ investment group. That's right. The mechanism is designed to be incredibly simple, deceptively so. So what do investors actually do? They're told to follow these trading signals, mm -hmm. often given out in that telegram group. And then they literally just click buttons inside the HelloBit app. Click buttons sounds like trading. It looks like trading. It feels yeah. like you're making smart moves, following expert advice. It gives this powerful illusion of active participation, of being in control. Yeah. But the trades aren't real. That's the core deception. Uh, the platform isn't actually executing trades on any real market. It's just uh, juggling numbers on a screen. It uses the money coming in from new investors to pay the withdrawal requests or the supposed profits of earlier investors. A classic Ponzi mechanism, as the source called it. Just recycling money. Exactly. It's an elaborate shell game disguised as finance. Mm. You think you're playing the market, but you're just feeding the machine that pays out yesterday's promises with today's deposits. Wow. That psychological aspect is quite something, making people feel involved. Oh, it's key. That click a button part is genius mm -hmm. in a nefarious way. It creates that feeling of agency, of productivity. You see numbers go up on your screen. You feel like you did something smart. Mm -hmm. It taps right into that desire for easy money and the tendency to trust something that looks slick and technical, even if the underlying reality is hollow. It convinces you you're doing something. And this isn't just theory. We've seen this before. The source mentioned other similar scams that collapsed. Absolutely. This isn't a new playbook, sadly. The source cites examples like uh, MTS Foundation, QTCP coin, Funafog. And they all collapsed fast, left people with huge losses. Devastatingly fast, yes. That's the nature of these things. They're built to extract cash quickly. They need that constant flow of new money. As soon as recruitment slows down, and it always does, the whole thing implodes almost overnight. And the money? Gone. Early investors might get some payouts paid with later investors' money, of course. But when it collapses, the vast majority lose everything. It vanishes into you know, anonymous crypto wallets. Recovery is basically impossible. Okay, so that's the mechanism. But let's zoom out a bit because our source pointed to something even, well, darker, more organized. It says HelloBit seems linked to a bigger network tied to organized crime operating out of Southeast Asia. Yes, that's a very concerning element mentioned. Specifically names places like Cambodia, Myanmar, but notes a global reach. This suggests it's not just a few isolated scammers. Right, it's bigger. And the source says authorities have made arrests related to these types of schemes. They have. There have been crackdowns, arrests reported in the region related to similar online scams. But these click a button Ponzi's keep popping up anyway. How do they manage that resilience if arrests are being made? What makes them so hard to stop? Well, it points to the sophistication we're dealing with. These aren't amateur setups. They're often highly organized, well-funded criminal networks. Their resilience comes from a few things. One, they use crypto's anonymity. Two, they're incredibly fast at rebranding, shutting down one site and popping up with a new name, a new look, almost immediately. Like whack-a-mole. Exactly. And three, they often operate across borders, exploiting jurisdictions where maybe enforcement or regulation is less stringent or where international cooperation is challenging. 
tying these scams directly to organized crime, as the source suggests for Hellabit, well, that seriously escalates the danger. It's not just about losing money anymore. You could be indirectly funding other serious criminal activity. That's sobering. And their ability to constantly regenerate, to launch new platforms using similar tactics, makes them incredibly difficult to stamp out completely. They're adaptable, resourceful, and operate outside easy legal reach. Which brings us right to the, uh, the bottom line risk. Mm -hmm. The source puts it incredibly bluntly. If you invest in Hellabit, there's a very high chance you could lose your money. Mm -hmm. And getting it back is almost impossible. That's about as stark as warnings get. And it's not hyperbole. It's the grim reality of these situations, especially when organized crime is involved. Yeah. Recovering funds is incredibly difficult, practically insurmountable for an individual investor. Why? Because these operations are designed to be outside the normal system. Right. They use anonymous crypto transactions. They operate across borders where legal action is complex, slow, maybe even impossible. By the time anyone even realizes the scam and authorities could potentially act, the money's been moved, laundered, split up. Yeah. It's effectively gone. Untraceable. So almost impossible is probably accurate. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. It's a very real, very harsh consequence. Okay. So to wrap up our deep dive today, the evidence seems pretty overwhelming, wouldn't you say? Hello bit is definitively not legitimate. Every sign points the same way. The uh, total lack of transparency. Who owns it? Who runs it? Nobody knows. Oh. Mm -hmm. The multiple fraudulent domains flagged by Cloudflare. The official warnings from financial regulators in Spain and New Zealand. Crucial warnings. And then the fact that there's no real product. It's just this click a button Ponzi app, recycling money. It just screams scam from every angle. It ticks all the boxes for a fraudulent operation. And adding that layer we just discussed, the likely links to sophisticated organized crime, mm -hmm. it just makes it even more dangerous. It really is a perfect example, isn't it? Yeah. A scam dressed up in the clothes of a professional crypto platform, designed to look good, lure you in, and then, well, take your money. Absolutely. It's a textbook case study. And my final thought, really, for you listening is just to urge extreme caution. Mm. Cultivate a really critical eye for any online investment, especially in crypto where things move so fast. Don't just look at the promises, the glossy website. Look behind it. Ask those basic questions. Can I verify who owns this? Is there a real, understandable product or service generating actual revenue? And crucially, has this platform been checked out, verified by any legitimate, recognized financial authority? If the answers are no or I can't tell, that's your signal. That's a huge red flag. Walk away. Sound advice. And that really leaves us with a final question to chew on, doesn't it? In this digital world with scams getting more sophisticated, how can we as individual investors really get better at spotting these red flags early? How do we protect ourselves effectively? And maybe even bigger picture, What's the responsibility of the platforms themselves, the hosting companies, the infrastructure providers? What role should they play in stopping these schemes before they even get off the ground? Mm, complex questions. Definitely something to think about. Well, thank you for joining us on this deep dive into Hellobit. We really hope this information helps you navigate the uh, sometimes tricky world of digital assets a bit more safely. Until next time.